Hi everyone, welcome back to the Mo Motivated podcast. Today is episode three. I am so thrilled to be talking about today's subject because it is for sure one of my most favorite subjects, nutrition. And who else than my very own nutritionist, Shahana? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for saying yes. I know you're busy, but you said yes. So thank Anything you. Anything for you. No <laughs> Love you. Please, I know you. You have tremendously helped me and my husband in our fitness journey. That is why I thought, you know, we need to have more and more people hear you because you're awesome at your work. I know that. They don't yet. Please introduce yourself. Cool. So. My name is Sahana and I'm a nutritionist and I've been working for the last five years and I have my own company called Dash of Nourishment and I believe in sustainable eating, healthy weight loss, healthy skin, healthy hair, whatever that needs to do with health, I'm the one for you. Absolutely. And I vouch for that, by the way, because you're great. I mean, you know, I mean, my to start off with, guys, I mean, my ve- oh, husband, I was going to say my very own. Uh, I mean, he is my husband, so I don't really like, you know, so my husband lost 18 kilos yeah. uh, in three months yeah. with workouts and your diet. So yeah. that that is why I mean, I, I love results. You know, I have had a lot of dietitians, nutritionists. And that brings me to my very first question. Right. Yeah. I forever and I think I'm still confused. Who is a dietitian? Who is a nutritionist? Is it the same or is it different? What is it? Like, what's the difference? Yeah, I think we start off with the best question <laughs> there because yeah. a lot of them are very confused because sometimes yeah. they say, oh, uh, you're a dietitian or oh, you're a yeah. nutritionist. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we study is the same, right? Okay. So I've also studied things that can make me a dietitian. Right. I've also studied things that can make me a nutritionist. Ah, okay. But the field of expertise that you decide to work on is what you're defines you. Okay. Yeah. So if you're working in a hospital setup, now say you're working with heart patients, kidney patients, you're working with someone who can't really eat via mouth and you need like tubes to like put food into their system. So that practice is very clinical and they're called dietitians. Okay. Okay. So when it comes to fitness, when it comes to weight loss, when it comes to lifestyle management, when it, when it comes to sports and things like that, where you're not working in a clinical setup where it's outside the hospital, right. then you're a nutritionist. There are very less medical conditions involved with a nutritionist correct. compared to Correct, correct. Dietitian. Yeah, wow. so you still work okay. with medical right. conditions right. like, say, diabetes, like thyroid, right. PCOS, right. and stuff like that, but it's not um, in a very hospital setup. You're not in the hospital and you're not prescribing diets for them, right. but then when you're like a lot more healthy. Wow. is when we come into the picture. So let's say, for example, I think the right way to say would be like, my dad, let's say, was a diabetic. Mm-hmm. So he would need a dietitian, whereas I was looking for, I was fit, but I'm just looking for a better toned body and diet, so I would need a nutritionist. Yes, yes, more wow. or less, Great. yes. Yeah. Uh, nutritionists can also work with diabetic patients, but uh, what I mean by hospital setup is like, say you have like a kidney condition, right. you're on dialysis, right. you have an open heart surgery. Right. So dietitians come into that role. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Wow. That's just an eye opener. I kind of yeah. never knew it. Yeah. It's like the difference between empathy and sympathy. Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's on the same line, but yet it's so different. It's different. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. Great. So, you know, the next question is again, I think it's going to help so many. Whenever like the most, the first word literally that you see when you search for weight loss is calorie deficit, right? So I know, I think I know a little bit about it because I've read a lot, right? But I feel like so many, it's so misunderstood that I think a professional should really throw some more light on it, so please do so. And also like, let just tell us who is it applicable for and in what kind of scenarios or circumstances, right? So yeah, if you can just throw some more light on that. I completely agree with the fact that anyone who you know, I, and the first thing that we would do is like, okay, I want to lose weight. And they're like, how do I lose weight, right? And the first thing, yeah, <laughs> first thing that comes is like, go on a deficit, work out yeah, this yeah, and that, yeah. okay? And, and when you say calorie deficit, like it's understood that you need to like cut down the amount of food, right, right. right? But then how much is the question? So calorie deficit in very simple terms would be to lessen your food within 20 to 25% and not more than that. Okay. okay. Not like, not like drastic. Yeah, not like drastic. Okay. So generally when they say calorie deficit, people just like leave rice or like, you know, stop eating meat or like right. they just like go deficit on a food group. Extreme. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what you actually need to do is just 
bring down 20 to 25 percent of what you're actually eating and you'll right. be on a deficit right. Right. yeah so and also the common mistake is that they go like a 80 percent deficit right. they go right. on a 90 percent deficit or 50 percent right. deficit so when you do that of course you lose weight because you're not right. eating right yeah. so you uh, suddenly yeah. Yeah. yeah and what generally happens is that when you go on a such a drastic plan the weight that you lose is mostly muscle right. Right. okay it's and then fat. yeah and then when you stop eating that when you go back to your normal ways you gain back all the weight which is not muscle but it's fat so when you gain back all the weight when you stop being on a deficit right it's pretty much fat yeah, yeah. right so you have double the fat percentage in your body so don't do that <laughs> i know that's this is why partial knowledge yeah. is so harmful yeah. like it literally gives you maybe just the opposite of what you desired or what you were looking for okay. right so, Chris, so what, so what is the right, so like you said, 25%, uh, like cut down gradually, so how, what's the duration that you're looking at when you're on a calorie deficit? Like, let's say, for example, I was, I think my example is a wrong example. I think I will give you Gotham's example because that's going to resonate with more people. Yeah. He was 118 kilos, yeah. and our goal weight was 90 kilos yeah. initially, and then see if we can bring it down to an 80 or maybe a 78, 80-ish, yeah. because I was a little crazy on that. I'm sure it, lesser is okay, but, but you know, like, for him, like, what, what did you do with him? Do you want to talk, talk about it? Like, he lost 18 kilos in three months with just yeah. one and a half hour of workout, barely any weight training, but mostly cardio. Yeah. Uh, not HIIT necessarily, but yeah, but anyways, but what, what did you do with him? Yeah. So if you remember, I think, I think he said, this is so much food. How will it? Yeah, because see the, see the mental right. block, that calorie yeah. deficit, I should not be eating. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so with Gautam, you know, he eats like a typical North Indian sort of diet where yeah. there's chawal, there's roti, there's sabzi, there's dal, there's paneer and everything. And he's also a vegetarian, yeah. right? And um, what I honestly did with him, what I noticed when the first thing is that he was under eating. Because you guys had already started something on your own, right? Right, right. We were on a 10-day yeah. diet from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, guilty. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. No sugar, no this, no that. Yeah, 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 I remember, I remember, yeah. So what I did was um, I, I just brought back the food in, you yeah. know, because um, you need certain amount of calories just to do normal things like breathing. Like and digest. we were working out exactly yeah, yeah yeah and then because you were also like burning calories right. then right so you need to like fuel yourself enough so that you survive so what happens when when i said you go on when when you go on a really low deficit it becomes very difficult to do like your day-to-day -day activities so what i did was i increased the quantity so that he's actually on like a 20 to 25 percent deficit right. right and then also when you have a lot of weight to lose yeah. you lose a much quicker like right. your first five kg is always right. easy right yeah. and then you're motivated to do more so in the first month or the first four weeks, like my focus would only be to like eat enough so that you bring down the weight right. and then you're motivated to try crazy stuff. Right. Like. right. Because you're not like, I and mean, he, even till now, whenever I, he's like, that's so much food though, yeah. you know? So we all believe like starving is the way, whereas yeah. it's not. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. That, that was so very clear. But, but I also want to bring in like my own journey because I know there's different category, right? There are people like, like my husband who is trying to go from 118 to a 90. And then there is me who, who at the time was slightly heavy if I kind of feel for myself. I was 64 and I wanted to come down to a 48 because my average weight has always been 55, 56. Like unless I'm binging for like a year, like an ice cream every day for a year will bring me to 64 quite honestly with zero workout. Like that of course is gonna bring anybody to that, to that point. But now let's say for example, I am at like a 55, mm -hmm. right? Which is, which is good I feel, but then I, I told you how I wanna to get to like a 48. So, you know, there are folks like that who want, loves extra skinny or you know, what, what suggestion do you have for people like me, people like them, do you yeah. think it's healthy, unhealthy? One is the intention of being in that weight category, right? Like for you, of course, like you, you want a model, you want to be in a particular body type to wear certain clothes and all of that. So first, like the intention is important. You don't want to lose weight because of something that's not worth it, right? Like, so, so the intention is important. And then the second thing is that if you are so, if you're committed enough, you'll get there. You just have to like put in the work like you know, yeah. like you did when you were at 64 and now you're at 54 right. and stuff like right. that, right? So um, of course, like when there's, again, I said when there's lesser weight to lose, it, it is going to get tough, uh -huh. right? Because you're not going to get it very easily. 
so i think that's when you need to be a little more like calculative about like how much protein how much fat how much carbohydrates and also that kind of exercise that right. you do right. is very important right you've been forever telling me to start weight training yeah, yeah. yeah. and i've forever been procrastinating but i know that's the way to go yeah. with and your proper diet yeah. and weight training is amazing for women because it helps us build more muscle right. which is it, yeah yeah and and since we don't have the hormone called testosterone in our body that much it's a little difficult for us to gain muscle so when you actually work towards it it stays you know like you're a lot more healthier right. so when you have more muscle mass your metabolism goes up you know like you're able to um you're able to feel strong more active more strength you're more active yeah and all of so it so a mix of cardio and strength like in one hour one and a half hour do you suggest like for women who are looking to be just fit normally get back in shape do you think like a good diet and like a one one and a half hour of mixed strength training and cardio is absolutely the way to go? absolutely like even 30 minutes of strength right is amazing and maybe 20 25 minutes of cardio, cardio. With yeah wow. whatever your it's easy plan. it's not that hard like yeah that's yeah. what we kind of wanted to like yeah. shed light on you know it's not yeah. that hard you guys yeah. you know be in the gym for 2 hours or 3 hours well, like and yeah, yeah just know what it, like she said exactly specifying yeah. like spend an hour in the gym or maybe 30 minutes of strength training and your 20 minutes of cardio and 10 yeah. minutes of stretching and chilling yeah. whatever your breaks included that's it, it and yeah. so easy yeah, yeah. it is and, and eat 20 and eat 25% lesser than your regular food absolutely try for a month and then you come yeah. to shahana for the next because phase 2 then she's going to give you specified customized stuff yeah, yeah. which i love yeah. all right <laughs> okay the third question you know um i have heard about it so much and i i happen to have met you met dermatologists to talk about it food you basically how you look and your hair directly relates with what you eat right is a result of what you eat how is like how is that related I mean how does that happen like what is this whole science behind it correct so the biggest organ on your body is your skin right, right? Ah. Yeah. yeah and then um and then also like the first thing that you notice someone is like their hair or their right. smile and things right. like so all these things definitely do uh, let you know like what you eat or like right. or like how good your genes are or like how well you take care of yourself and things True. like that right so um food plays an important role because if you don't feed yourself then your skin's going to be dry if you don't drink enough water you know you're going to be dehydrated so your your skin's going to look like like you have droopy eyes and things like that right so and and also your nutrients that you get on a daily basis like you know, let it be protein or let it be healthy fats or let it be um zinc vitamin c vitamin a magnesium and all of that so all these important nutrients are important for your like skin and hair and your overall health okay right. yeah because everything in your body is made out of cells and each cell needs some amount of nutrients Nutrition, for right. it to like you know flourish or like if like if a it plant. exactly yeah so so you need to be eating in a certain way that it also helps your skin and hair and everything so it 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 won't work like okay today i'm going to eat this so my skin's going to get better right. right so it's going to be like i'm going to eat this for a long time so that my health skin hair and everything gets better it it's not like you know like how you throw a dart and like okay i'm going to point yeah, there it's it's, it's yeah like it's not going to work like that yeah you have to eat so that there's a holistic right. sort of progress that's happening what are your like top 5 food that you would suggest like anybody to make sure that their skin and hair kind of gets the nutrient nutrients from it yeah. like what is your top 5 yeah so my first one would be water right how okay. much Okay. um close to like 2 to 3 liters of right. water you need not over, overdo yeah, it you need not, harmful, yeah you need not yeah yeah you need to overdo it right. so water is first thing um and then second thing is protein right because collagen your skin your hair keratin they're all made up of so protein like your chicken your eggs your Correct. fish yeah. your paneer yes tofu yeah. yes protein third would be vitamin c all the citrus yes. lime Correct. orange juice yeah yeah so vitamin c oh i thought you were you know all the sources of all the nutrients i'm very thinking, happy i was thinking i was trying to see because i was trying to think like when we like are these the yeah, true, right yeah, ones yeah, yeah. and that I'm, also helps maybe that uh, they know what, because these are scientific words and i am trying to make sure that correct. when i say mo- most people might not know the terminology correct I'm, i'm very impressed and happy Yay, <laughs> yeah i'm a good i'm, I'm, I'm just a like good vitamin c and then you're just saying things and i'm like yeah <laughs> that's correct yeah <laughs> so vitamin c and then the second thing would be omega 3 fatty acids right. which is your flax seeds walnuts right. um right. Right. fatty fishes right. and all of that right. and then the fifth one um would be whole grains 
okay like your uh, brown rice oats rice. bajra jowar no. yeah quinoa all of that so so whole grains will also help in um, like the synthesis of protein that you're eating as wow. well right so right. so they're all like together so sometimes what happens like when you um, cut out carbohydrates entirely you lose weight you'll also lose like your glow your I shine did. yeah right so because i was on a high protein diet for more than 40 45 days yeah. i mean body looked did not look ripped let me be honest yeah. i looked malnutritioned exactly. and sick yeah so you need yeah. like a certain amount of um, carbohydrates going in as well to like maintain your overall like skin texture and right. everything yeah wow so I think this, this, I hope it helps because, you know, most of us, like I, like I keep saying I'm one of them and that is the reason you're sitting here yeah, today yeah. so that they don't do what maybe I would have done, yeah, you know. Yeah. So thank you very much. And it just, just makes it so clear and so transparent, I feel now. Like, you know, I know exactly what to eat. So eat what we told every day. Yeah. <laughs> we are joking. No, but just, just do some more research. Like I said, set up your meetings with nutritionists, talk to them and get to know more because we really cannot cover everything in this very first session. We're going to try and do version two, but yes, let's, we're going to still have Shahana and ask more questions. So let's move, let's move on to the next question. Yeah. So, you know, my latest crush has been intermittent fasting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. Continue. Okay. So, so my that that's my next question. Do you think it's just a fad? And like, before, I know that it's going to be a long answer. That's so why I'm going to quickly ask the like yeah. the related question to it. Mm -hmm. uh, how, who do you think it helps, or how do you think it helps? So yeah. So, intermittent fasting is a great practice, you know, for people who want to correct their eating habits or correct their digestion or you know just sort of. Um, just be in a routine right. okay but then again when it's it's the same as a calorie deficit question if you overdo it or right. if you do it wrong right. then then it's not for you it's not for you so what have you been doing <laughs> that's my next question yeah i mean all i've been doing is i mean i do not eat post 6 p.m okay. and i do my first meal again at 11 a.m 10 or 11 between okay. 10 to 11 usually 11 okay. by the time i finish puja and like workout and everything yeah. Yeah. So I fast for that hour and then I'm doing something terrible. I'm working out, of course, mm -hmm. an hour or two a day. And um, meal-wise, I'm eating like kharka khana, mm -hmm. um, your rice and not, of course, I'm doing my not too much of a portion control, but like eating just how much till I feel full. Yeah. So I do my lunch very heavy and then I do like just an ice cream for dinner. Mm -hmm. So I've been eating ice cream for the last two and a half months every single day yeah. and fasting. Yeah. And I have not put on a one like any weight yeah so that's mainly because even though you're eating an ice cream you're still on a deficit right right okay but then what you'll probably see three months later is that you've definitely gained a little bit of fat percentage oh my gosh okay I, yeah. yeah so yeah. what what ex so the whole concept of it is again calorie deficit true right so you eat a lunch um and then a snack and maybe dinner and then you're not really eating any breakfast. Right. So that meal entirely, which is like close to like 300, 350 calories, is out of the question, right? So you're on a 300 calorie deficit then. Right. So, and that's how you lose weight. Right, but okay. then again, like brings us back to the very first thing that you Correct. said, it returns Correct. with. Yeah, so if your one meal that you're having doesn't really give you the nutrition that you need, right. then again, you're going to see like a lot of things that you don't want to experience right. in about like two, three months, right? right? So, because that, the tub of ice cream is like obviously not going to give you any sort of nutrition as such. And also, um, you will start losing weight for sure because you're in a right, deficit. Right. But then if you if you don't lose weight and if you're maintaining your weight, but then you'll slowly start seeing, you'll slowly start feeling like that pinchable fat that's yeah. there, that kind Bloated, of like... Yeah, yeah, I do feel that. Yeah. 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 Not that. Because you feel ripped when you're like on a Correct. portion controlled yeah. macros yeah. appropriate diet. Yeah. versus something yeah. like this. Yeah. And I knew I was doing it wrong, but yeah. it wasn't intentional. I mean, during the whole Europe tour, I, like I told you, like 35 days, I was, I'm lactose intolerant. There was so much meat around. So I just yeah. didn't know what to eat. And I ended up fasting, like, yeah. because I just didn't have anything that I liked around. To eat, yeah. yeah but yeah. now that I'm back, yeah. I must yeah. actually meet you yeah. after <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah. also what happens is that, although you're not hungry, right. But then you've digested your food like in the next three hours. Right. So you're basically empty stomach, yeah. right? Yeah. So your stomach acids are still yeah. secreting and right. your body is sort of like in the starvation mode, but yeah. then you're not hungry, hungry, okay? Right. So what happens when you're starving your body is a lot of stress that is in the body. 
You know what? I am not going to shy away from saying this, but I have been so short fused, yeah. which I am generally not. You know me. I'm like patient, nice, kind, and everything. Yeah. But I and I think. I mean, there's no shy. Poo is right here. My best friend Poo is here, guys. You guys cannot see her or hear her because she's not in the podcast, but she knows she sees it and she has been telling me this because she hangs out with me every day. Yeah. That, bro, you need to eat. Yeah. Like, you are flipping out. Yeah. You know? You're hangry. I'm hangry yeah. for sure. I yeah. no longer want to be hangry. Will you help me? Yeah. After yeah. our podcast? Of course. All right, All, great. Yeah. Okay, so shall we move on to the... Oh, no, yeah. before moving on to the next question yeah. then, in a one-liner, I always love giving them like that one-liner before we go. Yeah. Who do you, like you said, so you suggest intermittent fasting for people who are, like you said, trying to correct their food habits. Uh, then you said, what, was the other, what were the other quick things that... Digestion, okay, just issues. to maintain the routine and things like that. Okay. So, I, so intermittent fasting is basically a 12-hour fast like from the last meal to the next meal. So Not if you eat, hours like mine. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can do it for like different right. goals, but right. you just need to plan it out in a certain way with a professional so that you're not doing anything crazy, yeah. right? Always best to be done yeah. on the Yeah. So if you have your dinner by say eight and you have your breakfast by eight in the morning next day, you are in the intermittent fasting right. zone. So it's pretty right. much for everyone. You just have to do it the right way. Diligently and the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Got so it. give your body that 12 hours break you know don't like grab like a midnight snack or something where you know kind of like gets disrupted and then you have to wait like another 12 hours then then that's just like unhealthy practice got it yeah all right so you don't recommend it for like exclusively for weight loss not necessarily for weight loss not necessarily got like, it i mean depends again so if someone wants to do it see someone like few of them genuinely don't have an so appetite common nowadays yeah they don't have an appetite to eat breakfast right right okay then okay sure don't eat breakfast but then make sure you compensate for all the nutrients that in the ha- later part ah, of the day okay right Got it. also that doesn't mean you have like a eating window so you eat whatever you want you know right yeah you're just saying the right things yeah. because that's what we all do oh yeah. there's eight hours i can eat I let's can just eat belt yeah. as much as yeah. i can yeah. because that's the right word i say belt because that's exactly what we yeah. do we like hog food yeah and then you start for like, I start for 16 hours, yeah. but I necessarily am not the one who, I told you, just ice cream, I, I plead guilty only for, for the ice cream, but there's so many I know that does this, but thank you for throwing some light on that. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So let's move on to the next question. I think that I was just thinking like if there's more, but no, there's always gonna be more, yeah. but for, for I think episode one, three, nutritionist version one, we have to like really do another one and talk, get into more nitty gritties. Yeah. But for today, let's move on to the next question. So for people like me, you know, who is always dieting. <laughs> so, you know, we do our cheat days. Like, uh, you guys allow us, if that's the right word to use, yeah. one cheat day a week yeah. with a lot of difficulty. But I constantly felt the repercussions for it. Although, like, I know that people, you say that there are no repercussions. Maybe I'm cuckoo. I don't know, really. But, you know, like, I might I frantically message you. Like, you know, I had tiramisu. I don't know what to do. Like, you, it's just crazy we're talking about it just now. And, you know, it's because... Sometimes I indulge, it will be one tiramisu in one, seven days of hardcore dieting and working out. And I feel like the next day the scale goes up by a kilo or two. Yeah. What do you have to say for that depressing, I can't say the <laughs> word that I want to, but yeah. you know. Yeah. So honestly, I feel like if you're eating tiramisu or if you're eating like a scoop of ice cream or yeah. like pasta or pizza like you're so happy yeah. like why do you want to say cheat and like add like a negative notion to it because you know this kind of food i feel like makes you happy when you're eating it yeah. but then you feel Im- th- th- you don't like the after effects yeah. whereas a salad yeah. you don't maybe not enjoying it while eating it although i love salads yeah. but you love the repercussions yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so that is what i'm talking about like and also like two things maybe this question is like cheat days how should it be done mm-hmm and what's the do's and don'ts yeah. and uh, do you think the, about the repercussions that i'm talking about do you think that makes sense or it's just like my blocked mindset yeah so honestly i feel like it's a blocked mindset yeah. because i feel like since you've since you've been in the modeling field yeah. and you've always like been around like a very like maybe like the relationship with food has hasn't been great yeah. so you're constantly feeling guilty when you eat something that's not healthy yeah. or or something that doesn't like fall under your calorie category mm-hmm. and things like yeah. that right so um honestly there are no repercussions as such now say seven days okay so say there are 21 meals 20 meals you've eaten well right. okay one meal has just like gone out of the scene right. it's okay it's fine, yeah. it's fine right 
it yeah, averages it out yeah, really well, yeah yeah and and now say out of the 21 meals all 20 are out and one salad then that's stupid yeah right. so then then doesn't make uh, yeah sense, that's right? just common sense yeah I mean. then then you might have to face the repercussions right, right? but if right. it's just one meal honestly like it's not going to do anything you right. know i always believe that one healthy meal is not going to make you healthy or one unhealthy meal is not going to oh, make you right. unhealthy if it's only like two three four like several times that happens and then yeah you'll start seeing it like you said you feel weird or like you don't feel great right and things like that. right so for weight loss the ones who are watching their diet and yeah. they do diet yeah. uh, like for a year or two or whatever it's their lifestyle yeah. uh, what do you suggest one cheat day a week two cheat days a week and what like how does it we can eat anything everything how exactly yeah honestly it depends on how much you want to eat if you're a very social person you yeah. like to go out and like you know catch up with your friends right. you, you want to have like a drink or two or like eat your occasional dessert and stuff like that just plan it out okay so if you have a if you have a goal like okay i want to look a certain way i want to be a certain weight i want to look this way or that right. way then right. you obviously need to like prioritize what's right. more important right. but if you're just someone who like is very chill and you also want to be health conscious i feel like one or two meals a week is absolutely okay right and also it's very important to like brush it off get over it and then move on right right because what happens is that you've eaten something you're guilty and then how do i like compensate how do i manage that guilt you eat again yeah and then like okay, true yeah and then, oh my god you said like yeah. i literally when i start so basically if i'm on a seven day like say i'm on a 15 day diet yeah. and i cheated on the 16th day I never stop cheating. Yeah, you're like yeah, fine. Screw it's over. It. It's yeah, done. it's fine. I'm, it's like done. It's can, damage oh is done, God, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah. So how do we fix that? Yeah. So I think it just comes a little bit of like I feel like mental Gosh. work and you know like work on it and then right. try to prioritize like what's more important or like how do I get over it and things like that. So I feel it's okay, you right. know. So you can have it. Like there's no. Um, rule that you shouldn't be having it and things like that i feel like if you are very rigid with yourself where you're like oh no cheat days like i'm not yeah. gonna have it even, doesn't work yeah not even like a trust not work. sugar and things like because that because you go crazy for two three months and then trust me and it is and then it's the extremes of the of the of yeah. the evil side yeah. by that i mean yeah. you have zero control over the pizzas the pastas the desserts the the drinks the yeah. the the lifestyle is just insane you eat at 10:45 in the night you're binging at 2 a.m. correct like yeah. you know so, so what happens don't suggest so that because you're so controlled that when you when you, you lose control you you're just like crazy we spoke about yeah, it yeah 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 that i was so tough with yeah. myself for three months you know because yeah. i i tried convincing you to have those tiramisu's yeah. like every yeah. week like yeah. let it be a part of your lifestyle yeah. it's fine not feel guilty about yeah, it yeah you know but then you said no no yeah. cheat days yeah. and then yeah. i think you went on for like 26 days if yeah. i'm not wrong yeah and then after that i think you had I three tiramisu's it. yeah right i, I lost it and then that three tiramisu's did not stop yeah. yeah it was a tiramisu every night for at least yeah. a week or two yeah. and then again i had to you know So yeah that's I mean yeah. that's such a my gosh there's so much uh, like the the attention to detail yeah. in nutrition yeah. and it is like you know I don't understand why people don't want to know about it more because it's literally the fuel for your body yeah. you're going to live long yeah. you're going to look better yeah. you're going to have less health conditions yeah. all if you just talk to somebody who has done all the study you don't even have to do anything exactly. somebody has studied it yeah. just go spend 30 minutes maybe in every 6 months to a year yeah. figure out what you should be eating for your goal is what's good for you and just do it that's that, that's, the, that's where we need to actually spend time on yeah. not in a retail store buying selecting clothes exactly <laughs> priorities are so wrong bro yeah. for some people yeah. Yeah. but yeah guys i think please i hope this conversation makes you a little more enthusiastic about taking care of your own self yeah. But again, we are dealing with people who don't wear helmet, and others have to tell them they have to save their own head. True, that's the society yeah. we live in. But I hope this changes. Even if one of you, yeah, like do it the right yeah. way, we will be happy. Yeah, things are changing. It's right. definitely looking better uh, compared to the last two years. You know, right. people are more health conscious now. So it's slowly but surely. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I think COVID did a immense kind of like infusion of. like awareness true you know hygiene became important like yeah. washing hands yeah. which was such a basic yeah. thing yeah. using like a sanitizer before you put your hands on a chip yeah. or something like i couldn't believe a deadly disease had to tell people and remind them that this is how you should be living life yeah, yeah. so yeah I, i some good yeah. that it did yeah. and i feel nutrition is one of it definitely yeah people became very health conscious right. they wanted to work on their immunity and stuff like that so yeah it was good right yeah. great thank you 
So we do we have like a couple more questions. Yeah. So I'm gonna throw in the next one. Yeah. So coming back to my next question. You're smiling. What is this? I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I know. Because I know. I will tell you I'm smiling. Yeah. You know we all love a glowing skin. Yeah. We hear so much about hydration for the skin, for the health. Water is so important. Mm -hmm. I personally have overdone it. Uh, I used to drink four to five liters of water and go to the loo 20 times. That was so tiring. Mm -hmm. And recently I realized it was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. So would you talk more about it? Yeah. Yeah. So I've definitely like seen and heard people overdo the water yeah. bit because like everyone emphasizes on hydration and it's important yeah. and la 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 and all of that but then you can't overdo it right True. so so one easiest way to like interpret this is that your blood in your body right is um is in a water medium it's liquid right, right. so you get oxygen from water you get your nutrients from water so everything is transported via blood right, right. so if you drink too much water, you're diluting the medium of your blood, right? So, you're, it's it's like, let's say you're um, making nimbu pani and your ratio of nimbu and water is just crazy that it just tastes like water right now, right? right? Yeah. So, so, you can't do that to your blood. You can't oh, dilute right. the concentration of it that it can't actually do what it has to do. With job. Yeah. So when you like overdo the water, you're diluting the medium. Like it's like you're washing away things that need to be there in your body, right? So that's mm -hmm. why um, you're, you're peeing a lot because also because you're consuming so much so water. So much water, right? right? Yeah. And then your body is responsible for your um, body temperature, right? If you do too much of it, like it could go really low or it could go high. You don't know what you're doing, right? So confusing the body. Exactly. So much. Yeah. So it's it's okay. Let's imagine a water bottle. Okay, you're trying to fill it till the brim and then you're overfilling it then it's just spilling then right. it's no benefit it's just yeah, doesn't make sense yeah you're just wasting doing it, good right? to yeah. nobody so an easiest way to know whether you are hydrated enough or if so much amount of water is enough for you is to check your urine color right right so whenever you pee if it's brown if it's yellow or if it's like that fluorescent yellow then you're dehydrated right right if your pee color is like pale yellow right. or closer to transparent then you're hydrated. Right. Right. Yes. So, yeah. So that's an easiest way to know whether right. it, um, you know whether you're hydrated or no. And if it's white, that means you're drinking too much water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, like even when you're hydrated, it's pretty much transparent, right. just like water. Uh, but then you can't overdo it to a point where you're feeling uncomfortable drinking water. There's so much so, water. Right. That's system. what I've been through. Like it's like you're always full. You're you're always yeah, you're always yeah. heavy. Yeah. yeah. And then you're always like rushing to the washroom Blue, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So yeah, of course, like if you're staying in a hotter city or like the temperature is very humid, then of course you, you're yeah. losing a lot of water in the form of right. sweat and all right. that. Then you just like replenish it and that's fine. But then you can't just overdo water just because someone said, oh, you need to drink like five liters of water. Right. Then that's not cool. So you need yeah. to be a little mindful about how much water goes in. Because that was a suggestion I got like from my dietitian when my very first time in my life when I met a dietitian, you know, she said, Oh, so you're going to go on this 15-day high-protein diet, three meals a day, do not eat after seven, and you have to drink four to five liters of water every day with like an hour of workout. Mm -hmm. And me, who was drinking maybe one liter, or not one, maybe one and a half, two liters, normally suddenly jumping to five was so tight. Like I said, yeah. it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Like yeah. I had to push myself to finish the last drop of my five-liter count. Yeah. And yeah. I was losing so much weight, of course, maybe because... For the first time in my life, I got on a diet, yeah, yeah. you know, and I was yeah. working out so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, 15 days is going to take away two, sorry, a month took away two to three, four kilos. Yeah, yeah. But then I very soon realized that I was actually harming my body by that. Yeah. So, what's the right amount of water to consume? I think you said three and a half. Yeah, I think, I think two to three liters should be fine, okay? But if you're someone who's active and you work out, and then if you're someone who sweats a lot, then you can include like an additional... Um, 750 ml to one liter or like 500 to 750 ml extra water right. depending on how much you sweat and what your workout is like and then also your recovery the next day and okay. if, you know if you're still tired and if you're still a little like groggy then of course then increase your water a little bit so you need to like like look for signs that your body gives you right you know it's for me i could be very happy with two liters right for you it could be three right right but then yeah because yeah. Just because I'm doing two and I'm like, hey, you should do two too. Right. And then it, it might not work for you. You know, you could still be dehydrated. Right. So honestly, it's very bio-individual. But I feel like 
in a like a rough average about like two to three liters should be fine okay yeah so i'm now doing the right thing then yeah yeah i know that for yeah. sure yeah. how does water have a role in in weight loss like why does every dietitian or every nutritionist kind of ask us to add good sleep good amount of water and a calorie deficit and like portion controlled equal macro C- calculated diet. Correct. Wow, there were a lot of words, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost sounding like one of those regular patients. What are we called, by the way, very quickly before you go? So the people who go to a Client? nutritionist, clients yeah. is the word. And then in the in the hospital, of course, you're a patient. Right, I admitted. always wondered. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I kind of uh, derailed from the topic. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I was saying weight loss, uh, the yeah. water's, uh, I mean, contribution to weight loss. Correct. So what happens is that when you go on a calorie deficit or like a, say, like a high protein diet or something so you're changing the way you eat yeah so your digestive system takes a little bit of time to like get used to it there's a high chance that you could be constipated right, right. because you you aren't having like enough food to like form stools or you know or you just haven't been like or you're not having enough water or, or whatever like many right. reasons right when a client comes to us there'll be like thousand things that's like not working in their favor so you correct each one of them right so mostly like honestly for me water is not my important ingredient like to lose weight like when i work with clients but there is a high chance that you could be constipated so you're not able to flush out the food that you're eating so water helps water helps so water basically helps because you need enough water to form stools. Right. Right. Oh, like if, if not, you're constipated. Right. I've been through that again. High yeah. protein diets definitely yeah. gets you there. Yeah. And that could be a reason why probably people emphasize on taking water. And also, if you're if you're on a deficit, you do get hungry a little bit, like in the starting stages. So you right. just like drink water to kind of suppress the hunger a little bit, just so that you know you're consuming something. But then again, I don't think it really like helps with weight loss if you're just drinking water right it's basically anything. just helps maybe because you're on the diet yeah. so it helps you not necessarily losing weight but like correct, correct. kind of get your body yeah. a little more ready yeah. or yeah. easy yeah the yeah. Pro- makes the process yeah. easy yeah. Oh, that is why yeah. everyone asks us to drink yeah. water i always yeah. wonder yeah why. so and also like maybe it's now say if you're drinking water say in the form of like nimbu pani right or like tender coconut water is that still considered water yeah it's liquid right like it's okay. liquid intake like so if i'm having like two tender coconuts a day i can consider it as like a 450 ml or of water you could. for the consumption yeah. of the three liters and yeah. them doing a you day. Could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, but then also we have to see if you actually need 450 ml of tender coconut water, because tender coconut water also comes with some calories, some minerals, wow. and all of that as well. So you can't overdo anything at this point. Right. I think that's literally yeah. being like the tagline of this. Moderation yep. is the key. Right. Is what I like to say all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That brings us to our last question. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's so much. Like we said, we tried to keep it as short, but then you know, there's so much, and there's still there's so much to talk about. But I hope, like, I mean, we are covering definitely the main, the basics that everybody, right, like, really, really, really needs to know. I feel yeah. to take care of your own self and live yeah. a better, longer life. Um, but yeah, that brings us to our last question. Sadly, I will keep wanting. I mean, I keep wanting continue this like conversation because it's so interesting and yeah. it's so beneficial for me because I like to take care of myself you know I want to have a good lifespan yeah. for my kids for me for everybody for my dog for everyone you know yeah. so all right so let's go on to the last question so we have spoken so much about weight loss I also before you go away I also want to quickly talk about weight management because a lot of people now you said a lot of us are now fit, fit, into fitness and we it's, it's like you know a lot more people compared to what it used to be right so there's there are folks who I know who has achieved the target who are who's there what they wanted so weight management is also a mystery right how do you consistently keep at that weight that you have lost maybe after a year or two or even three for that matter and why you explain that, I know that I'm sure you're going to include macros. And I have said that word 100,000 times in this, in this podcast. So, you know, it could be a jargon for somebody who is not so well read into the whole food or nutrition field. So please do throw some more light on what macros is and how, how it works in weight loss, weight management or anything yeah. for that matter. Yeah. So, like, if you watch, like, any professionals speaking about weight loss, they're right. always like, manage your micro, I'm sorry, manage your macros, manage your micros and all of that. So, so macros is basically your carbohydrates, protein and fat. Okay. And micros is basically your vitamins and minerals. Mm-hmm. Okay. So macros is basically like majority of the food that you eat. So you get your micros from like fruits so and Can you break it down into that. food so that people know? So macros you said is carbohydrate, let's say rice. Yeah. Rice, roti. Fish. Yeah. Rice, roti is your, yeah. is your carbohydrate. Yeah. Yeah. 
pasta yeah right okay and, and then protein is your dairy tofu paneer chicken eggs okay. fish okay. right or your meat products right and then fat of course is your like nuts and seeds and uh, the cooking oil that you use like coconut oil ghee butter right so they're all avocado so they're your fat right okay so these are mm-hmm. the three things and when you um sort of want to maintain your weight you basically kind of focus on the macro split that you do okay so how much percent of carbohydrates how much percent of protein how much percent of fat to reach this weight from this weight yeah yeah okay so it's it's very simple so it again depends it is like it's very dependent on your age your height right your gender weight, your gender right what kind of activity how much sleep right. do you get and things right. like that okay right. so right. so it like if you want to if you want to maintain your calories i would say like 50% of your meals should be vegetables fiber low in calorie okay the remaining 25% can be protein and then the remaining 25 can be carbohydrate so protein and carbohydrate can be the same quantity yeah okay okay and then the remaining is like vegetables right so i love vegetables thankfully yeah. fortunately yeah yeah, yeah. but and please eat your vegetables guys yeah so yeah. important very important like really sometimes i mean it might sound like a little gloating but really i'm 34 years old and i really do not have much signs of aging like that yeah. and i i feel that's because from birth my mother fed us so many so much herbs yeah. and vegetables in our diets yeah. that i feel it is really sh- and i have continued that yeah. tradition because i love yeah. herbs and i cannot do without vegetables like i wait yeah. to eat vegetables and i am so glad i am that way because gotham is not yeah. uh, and you know it's just yeah. i'm way more healthier yeah there's also this meme where it says desi parents love language just to cut fruits and give you true. right so that is true yeah so they just randomly have this apple in front of yeah. you and then there's like there's always yeah fruit. there's yeah. apple there's the grapes or they will have oranges peeled off there's banana sent out like yeah thank god yeah i know i know i mean this is a shout out yeah. really and yeah. i had this thought even i think day before yesterday yeah last night when i was driving back home shout out to indian parents no offense to anyone else but yeah. since we are indians and yeah. we only know how indian parents are yeah. shout out to them they literally sacrifice their entire life to make sure yeah. like even jobs and time like you know you know what i mean they, yeah, like, my mother food. never had a hard time yeah yeah there's always never food on the table. yeah she's never hung out without us yeah since shit that makes me feel bad now that i say you're meeting us soon right I am meeting her yeah. soon but she needs to hang out alone she needs to have her alone time she has never had that yeah that yeah. makes me feel bad we completely yeah. derailed again yeah. but okay that, yeah. i know that we said this was the last question but there was one last that i was going to ask her yeah. and um this one a lot of you would have uh, would have heard and spoken you know vegan diets mm-hmm. are again a fad or not i do not know mm-hmm. I went vegan for reasons that I had I mean you know I kind of after losing my dad I really had this condition where I could not eat meat mm. I was throwing up every time so mm. and I am lactose intolerant since birth so it made me a vegan yeah. uh, then a vegetarian so yeah. you know so I kind of I don't know I'm no longer a vegan but I eat meat now but mm. what are your thoughts what's your two cents yeah. on on vegan diets yeah so Honestly veganism or vegan diet is not a fad it's the way of life like right. people um choose to be a vegan for environmental reasons right. or you know like for for animals right. it's it's a lifestyle right? right so people who are vegan they don't use like plastic they don't use silk you right. know like I, i have friends who are vegan who don't wear silk sarees right because it's for it comes from the moth right, right? silk moth so So you have like that's a lifestyle that they right. choose, right? Right. And, and you totally respect that, correct. for sure, because it's. I feel like it's not easy. It's not. The choices are so yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. So that's the life that they choose that they want to do something for the environment or for themselves, which is which is really big, right? Right. So 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 when they do that, of course, eating is like one major part of your life, of right? So you try and minimize all the animal products, okay? Right. So so things like no dairy. no honey cuz it comes from bees wow. right and then um like no like then obviously then non veg and like right. egg eggs and all of that is like out of the question so 
so it's very plant based okay right. so that what plant based also means is that you're not having any animal products okay? right. like your first like if you're a vegetarian who's still consuming like ghee and milk right. and butter you're, you're not a vegan you're not a vegan of course, right yeah. so you need to that's the difference between a vegan correct. and a vegetarian correct yeah. yeah so they go very specific that they don't even have honey because it comes from bees wow right so yeah i mean i enjoyed yeah. my vegan phase it uh, of course left me a lot more clear we left me with a lot more clearer thoughts yeah. i felt like yeah. my even my thought process was of like course. a lot more clearer i yeah. felt you know yeah yeah you know because it's also it like you know protein is slightly more difficult for the body to digest right. okay so when you are and and also when you are having a very plant based diet there are so many vegetables so right. many colors like right. your inflammation in the body comes down okay so it's definitely it has its benefits but if you're not if there isn't any particular reason or if there's no drive to do it don't do then it. don't do it yeah. right? right so if just because someone did uh, like a plant based diet and like they saw crazy just because it sounds cool yeah like it's the new keto it's now it's the new right? keto so for sure and everybody wants to like yeah. if you go to instagram it'll be like oh plant based plant based i'm yeah. like great i mean i'm all for it yeah. i love it but i want to really see how long you continue it yeah. i mean because i really know people who yeah. are vegan yeah. maybe since birth or for like the longest time and i see how difficult it is like exactly. when we go out dining and stuff you exactly. have to be like you know most restaurants do not even like now i'm glad like we we live in a good city and in a great area like yeah. you know where there are more and more vegan restaurants True. that's come up we have True. more options but yeah. you know it's not that easy yeah exactly for a vegan. yeah and also a plus is that um, a lot of allergies are taken into right. consideration of course, right Pina, from yeah. nuts or from like exactly kind of different, yeah. you know so you can confidently walk into a vegan restaurant and eat anything and right. your lactose intolerance is not yeah. going to get tr- yeah. triggered or anything and the yeah. after effects are so awesome yeah like yeah. trust me when i was vegan for a year and a half i haven't looked better than how i did and i haven't felt better yeah. Yeah. than what i what I, how i did when i was yeah. vegan you yeah. Know? yeah yeah so Wow, so I think that brings us to like the end of this. I feel, I feel like I want to keep going on and on. I know, and on, I know. Right? Yeah, yeah. But thank you so much. I'm My pleasure. I am so ha- very happy we did this. Yeah. And I want to do this again. We will do this again. For sure. You know, we have to do like a episode season two or episode two of yeah, this because yeah. we, sh- we want to share more. There's so much to talk There's about. There's so much to talk yeah. about. Yeah. So, but thank you again for coming. No problem Any at all. Any last words of wisdom before we say goodbye? Um... I would just say enjoy your food you know like it's your fuel right. you you I don't think you should think twice about like eating something or like eating something different experiment stuff eat it be happy you've eaten something bad move on start fresh again so I don't think there should be like any guilt associated with food or any sort of negative emotion because that also impacts the way you digest that particular yeah. food you know so don't feel guilty just say whatever you eat nourishes you and your soul and I think everything has to be taken care of. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. On that note, I'm going to kind of put you on a spot. Mm-hmm. And so do you promise to help me to come from 54 to 48? hundred percent. In the shortest time? Yes. Okay, let's yeah. do this. Shortest time, I don't know, but the right time. I know. Yeah. You are yeah. like the nicest. Yeah. I, I adore that about you. You yeah. never like over, like you never promote unhealthy yeah and yeah. that's like being doing amazing justice to your yeah, job yeah like it, you're it's, true it's borderline unethical yeah, yeah. i'll be like f- five days five kgs i promise that that's that's not gonna happen I know. yeah <laughs> yeah so it's just joking. crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, you're no, like don't believe me yeah. oh yeah, yeah, i know yeah, you yeah, come yeah, on yeah. all righty guys so yeah. i we had so much fun doing this with all of you thank you so very much for for being with us for for like joining us i mean we i try to share more and more of what I have been through during during like throughout all of this with my skin with my hair or with my health so food is so important I'm so glad that Shana is here and she shared so much so take care of yourselves take good care of your health do all the cute things that you do and be kind to one one another we'll see you guys again for the next episode of Miss Momo bye you guys